M. Night Shyamalan. <sighs> you know, I was just gonna do a review on The Last Airbender, but in order for someone to fully understand what the real Avatar is, and yes, that's what I'm going to be calling it, one must first understand the context of the film. And that context is M. Night Shyamalan's career. M. Night really isn't even a director anymore. He's a legend. How do you start so high? and get so low. And I'm not talking about like high tension to mirrors, I'm talking about like people lining up to see the movie because your name's on it, to nobody seeing the movie because your name's on it. And I'm just about sick of people saying the devil was actually not that bad or not as bad, but I'm thinking, what the hell? He didn't even direct it, so why are you even talking about this? The fact is, is that it doesn't count, and neither do his first two movies before The Sixth Sense. This is the timeline. From The Sixth Sense to The Real Avatar. Go. So you watch The Sixth Sense and you're just like, wow, that's a great movie. It's a classic movie. There are so many parodies of it, and it's engraved into our culture. I can definitively say that this is his best movie. And the reason why I think it's better than Unbreakable is because it is more of a classic movie, and it holds more emotional value in it. The Sixth Sense is a far more powerful film, and although it does have its flaws, it's a great movie. And most of the flaws just come with the fact that it's a ghost movie. Like, how many people do you think have died in the past? Wouldn't there just be, like, some, like, giant pool of bodies that he's kind of walking through if he can see them? Wouldn't it kind of just be, like, a really, really crowded everywhere? Like, wouldn't they be overlapping into each other? And what about animals? I mean, like, do animals have ghosts? If there are no animal ghosts, does that mean that there are also no Homo erectus or Neanderthal ghosts? No one has found the link between apes and this Homo erectus. Yes, they have! It's called Homo habilis! Aha! Uh -huh. But no one has found the missing link between ape and the so-called Homo habilis. Yes, they have! It's called Australopithecus africanus! Ho oh, ho! I've got you now! Did all of these monkeys just die like batteries? I mean, at what point did they become ghosts? Evolution aside, what really doesn't make sense is these guys. It's explained in the movie that when you're dead, you don't know you're dead, and you're living your lives like normal and seeing what you want to see. But these guys don't make any sense. If they don't believe they're dead, wouldn't they have imagined some sort of like, oh, I escaped and now I'm walking around? Wouldn't they realize they're ghosts once they realize they've been there for like a couple hundred years hanging from the neck? I mean, wouldn't someone have taken down the ropes by then? So like, does that mean that there are, like, ghost ropes and, like, ghost clothes? I mean, if there are no ropes, does that mean they're flying? Can ghosts also fly? Can ghosts only fly if it's for the sake of creating this illusion that they're still hanging from- This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, The Sixth Sense is a great movie. We've been huge fans for so long, and, and, and uh, you know, at times when you've gotten down on, on some of your movies and reviews, we've been, like, championing them to other people. Like Unbreakable, for right. example. I walk across the street and some teenager will bolt across traffic and almost get hit and be like, I love Unbreakable. And I'll be like, oh, thank you. So not only has M. Night made one of the most classic movies of all time, but he's also managed to make a movie with a huge cult following. You watch Unbreakable and you're like, hey, this director seems pretty promising. He's had two good hits in a row. Unbreakable is the only other M. Night film that I can actually feel emotion from. I mean, it's not as powerful as The Sixth Sense, but it's still a great movie, even though it does have its flaws. For example, it seems as if his psychic abilities are to see if weapons are on people, or to see if they've done something bad recently. Like if he touches somebody, he can see if they stole something, or if they smuggled drugs. Basically any bad things that someone's done. And I start to wonder if it's like a general sense of it being bad, or if it's like his personal opinion. Selling drugs being bad is debatable depending on what they are. But anyway, what the whole movie leads up to is this guy that like breaks into somebody else's house, kills the dad, 
and ties up all the girls in the house. But then he like goes to work because he's a custodian and that's how he bumps into him. And I'm thinking like, did you honestly just tie people up and then go to work and then come back from work so you can go back to that house? And then I start to think about how impractical that superpower is. I mean, how many people is he gonna run into that are in mid-crime so that he can see that they've done something, but also there's time to save the day? It seems like he just has a superpower of hindsight. Captain Hindsight, thank God you've come! What's the skinny? There's people trapped in that burning building, Captain Hindsight! And the fire is so massive we can't get to them! You see those windows on the right side? They should have built fire escapes on those windows for the higher floors, then people could have gotten down. Well, looks like my job here is done. Goodbye, everyone! Thank you, Captain Hindsight! Thank you! So right after we see a pretty ingenious shot that I'm not even gonna explain because you should just watch the movie, Bruce Willis steps outside and then the killer guy was all like, Aha! And pushes him into the pool. And then Bruce Willis is all like, Oh no, I'm afraid of water and I can't swim. And then the two girls that he untied, like, save him. And then Bruce Willis just goes back upstairs, and I guess he's lucky that this is, like, the craziest person in the world. Because not only did he not check to see if Bruce Willis had died, and if he just kind of looked down, he would have seen those two girls saving him. But he also didn't check to see if he untied those girls, which is something that I would do if I was trying to balance my job and killing a family at the same time. He just kind of stands there looking at the woman tied up and spits beer on the carpet. This guy is the craziest person in the world. All in all, great movie. So where does the movie Signs fit in? Well, it's not quite as good as The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable, but it's not quite as bad as The Happening or The Village or Lady in the Water. It's kind of in the middle. So you watch Signs and you're like, hey, that wasn't... That wasn't as good as the first two. I mean, like, every director has a movie that's not as good as the other ones. But I'm okay with that, maybe their next one will be better. This feels so imbalanced now, the first two movies had this glorification before I started insulting them. But there's really not that much good about this movie at all. There's just so much wrong with this movie, I don't even feel like talking about it. If you were Joaquin Phoenix in this scene, going up the stairs to check and see if the aliens are still around, wouldn't you take the axe with you? Of course you would! You would have to be an absolute fucking moron not to take the axe with you. But he doesn't take the axe. He walks up the stairs completely unarmed. There is no human being alive on this planet so stupid that they would leave the axe downstairs while they were going up there to check and see if there were still aliens trying to kill them upstairs. If a knife will go through them, then a bullet will go through them. So just shoot the motherfucker. We're talking about an alien species that has mastered interstellar travel has mastered cloaking technology for their ships, and yet they can't get past a simple wooden door? I could get past that fucking door and kill that family if I really wanted to. Water? Are you fucking kidding me? Water! The alien's only weakness, aside from kitchen knives, I guess, is water. Water! The most abundant resource on the planet Earth! There are so many things wrong with this. Number one, what about humidity? There's water in the air. Shouldn't the air therefore kill these fucking aliens? Number two, why would these aliens come conquer a planet made almost entirely of fucking water? That would be like if you and I decided to go conquer a lava planet. Hey guys, wanna go conquer a planet made of lava? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And hey, let's not only conquer a planet made of lava, Let's do it naked! Woo! Overall, not that good.